Hi, and welcome to Catering Toolbox, where you'll find the tools and information you'll need to succeed in the challenging field of catering. I'm Doug Biggs, and this is part three in our series on barbecue picnic catering. We've just arrived at the event, and it's time to get set up and start grilling. I've set our arrival time two hours prior to the time we need to be ready to serve. Our first order of business is to get the grill set up and get the coals lit. While the coals are heating up, we'll have time to set up our buffet. When we grill, we always use mesquite wood charcoal. It's readily available in these 40 pound bags. You can add hickory wood, oak wood, or any other popular wood in your region, but I wouldn't recommend charcoal briquettes. They're just a little bit too ordinary. When guests stop by to watch us grill, they're always impressed to see that we're grilling with real wood coal. So to light up our grill, we pile up our coal and douse it generously with lighter fluid. Don't be shy here. I don't want to have to come back 10 minutes later and have to relight my grill. The coals will need to burn about 30 minutes to be ready for cooking. For this menu, we use two standard six-foot banquet tables placed end-to-end. -end. I cover the tables with floor-length six-foot fitted table drapes. You can also use three 85-inch square tablecloths. What's most important, though, is to cover the ugly table legs, giving us a clean and professional look. Here's what not to do. There's nothing appealing about this no frills presentation. Start by picking a shady spot for your buffet. When shade isn't available, we bring a large market umbrella to keep the salad shaded. After placing the table drapes, I map out the placement for each bowl, basket, and chafing dish that we'll place on the buffet and place risers where needed. I then place colorful linens over the risers and fluff or cloud them on the table. We start with the side dishes and work our way to the end for the main courses. We use three chafing dishes, one each for the beans, chicken, and tri-tip. I found this style of chafing dishes several years ago. They're perfect for an outdoor event because the sides are covered to protect from the wind. Standard chafing dishes are virtually useless outside because the slightest breeze keeps the sterno fuel from heating the steam pan sufficiently. I like to cover the chafing dishes with napkins for a more finished look being careful not to cover the air vents completely, which would smother the flame. Okay, now that our buffet is set up, our grill should be just about ready. Let's check it out and we'll start cooking our tri-tip. I check the temperature by holding my hand over the grill. If I have to pull my hand away in three seconds, the temperature is just right. If necessary, I can raise or lower the grill surface to adjust the temperature. After cleaning the grill surface with a large wire brush, I load the grill with a tri-tip, alternating and interlocking the pieces to maximize grill space. The tri-tip will take between 20 and 30 minutes to cook depending on the size of the piece. I shoot for medium to medium rare in the center, which will give us some well done slices on the tapered ends. The tri-tip has to be turned every five minutes until it is done cooking. After each flip of the tri-tip, I can leave the grill to work on finishing the buffet setup or readying the side dishes for service. With the tri-tip nearing completion after 20 minutes of cooking, I turn the pieces on end with the thickest side towards the coals. As cooking nears completion, I poke the thickest part of the tri-tip with my finger to judge the doneness. Beef feels more firm to the touch as it cooks. Not all the pieces will finish cooking at the same time. The thicker pieces will need to stay on the grill for a bit longer. As each piece finishes cooking, I place it into a four inch deep hotel pan again interlocking the pieces to conserve space. When all the tri-tip is finished cooking and loaded in my pan, I cover the pan with a layer of plastic and foil and place it in my Cambro hot box. Remember, heat rises, so if you're only going to put one pan in your hot box, place it on the top level. The tri-tip needs to stay in the Cambro for at least 15 minutes for the meat to rest. The chicken has been fully cooked back at the kitchen. Here on the job, I'm going to place it on the grill to touch it up and give it some flavor from the grill. I start by placing the chicken pieces skin side down on the grill. Next, I sauce the underside of the chicken. I turn each piece over and then add more sauce. Finally, it's back into the pan, ready for the buffet. Next, it's time to get the cold items ready for the buffet. The garden salad and potato salad are placed in bowls. 
ranch and Italian dressings go into serving dishes, and finally the salsa. With 30 minutes till service, it's time to slice the tri-tip. To slice the tri-tip, I always slice against the grain of the beef. The easy way to do this is to look for the flat side of each piece and slice parallel to this side with slices 1 8 to 1 quarter inch thick. Use your fingers as a guide, but be careful not to cut a finger. After I slice each piece, I place it back in the pan for service. Slicing all the pieces will take 8 to 10 minutes. With 15 minutes to go before service, it's time to heat up the garlic bread. I simply place the foil wrapped loaves on the grill and turn them every couple of minutes. I place the heated bread in a basket on the buffet and place backup loaves in a cambro for refilling. Okay, five minutes to go. Time to load up the buffet. On go the salads, the garlic bread, then the beans, potato salad, the chicken, and finally the tri-tip. Using our system, two staff can easily handle a barbecue for 100 guests. The buffet is set up to be self-service for the side dishes with the tri-tip and chicken served by our server at the end of the buffet. We ask each guest if they would like both tri-tip and chicken. Guests have their choice of light and dark meat chicken as well. We bring plenty of food so that guests can come back for seconds if they would like. While my assistant serves the tri-tip and chicken at the buffet, I'll replenish the buffet as items run low. With this setup, we can serve all 100 guests in about 15 minutes. With all the guests served and enjoying the food, we've heard rave reviews and requests for business cards. Great food, presentation, and service at the events you cater are without a doubt the best advertising you can do. I'm Doug Biggs with Catering Toolbox. Thank you for watching. I wish you great success in catering your next barbecue picnic. Be sure and check the website for even more forms, tools, and information for growing your business.